Worldwide. Thank you all for that, and uh, we'll put that in the record. You awarded it. Last Sunday, we passed 200. So we got just a little ways to go for to reach our goal of 300. My message title of the day is Sin Defined by God for Adults. Any adults here? No? No adults here? <laughs> oh, my first verse is in the book of Numbers, chapter 32, verse 23. Now, I won't be going around a lot, so you probably won't be able to keep up. But that verse says, But if you will not do so, behold, ye have sinned. And what this verse is referenced to is when Israel was about to enter the promised land, two and a half tribes stayed on the east side of Jordan. And Moses told them, he says, you can't sit here and rest while the rest of everybody else goes out and fights. <laughs> so when they cross over Jordan, you have to go with them and you have to fight until all the land is conquered. And when the fighting is all done, then you can go home. And he says, if you don't go, it's a sin. And we're all in a battle against the evil of this world. And if you're not doing something to fight it, it just might be a sin in your life if you're not doing something. Now, we all can't do the same thing. Uh, I'm 79, pushing 80, and there's some things I just don't do no more. <laughs> Is that right, brother? Amen. Amen. You got an amen over here. So, uh, think about the things you do for Christ and uh, whether or not uh, you're doing anything at all. The, the, the least you can do is have a good Christian testimony around those that are around you. And if you get a chance, give the gospel to someone that needs it. Second verse is Deuteronomy 23, 21. When thou, <clears throat> vowest, when thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin. When you promise God you're going to do something, a lot of people, they get down in a hole of one sort or another, and they call out, oh, God, save me. If you save me, I'll serve you. And then as soon as they're out of the hole, they forget about what they said to God. God's going to hold them accountable. I don't know what kind of hole you're in, and uh, I don't know your way out, but I know Jesus will be there with you. This um, man went to visit a home, and there was a little boy there, and he asked the little boy if he knew Jesus. He said, oh yeah, he was behind the couch when I was hiding from daddy. So if you want Jesus, he'll show up. Numbers 30, verse 2, If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with blood, a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. Watch what you say. It could catch you in a lie. Or you say today you're going to do something tomorrow and then you don't do it. Unless you have a great big excuse, a real good reason why you didn't do it, it would be a sin. Ecclesiastes 5 verses 4 and 5. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. For he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. No, so if you want to keep from the possibility of sinning, don't promise nothing. Now, if you have the capacity to do something for the Lord, do it. But don't promise somebody you're going to do something if you're not going to show up. 
and I'm falling apart. <laughs> All right, next one. 1 Samuel 12, 23. God forbid that I should sin in ceasing to pray for you. And this is Samuel. He's old, he's getting ready to die. He's been leading the children of Israel for many years, been a prophet of the Lord. And he's, he gives them warnings of what could happen after he dies, which happened anyway. But he says, God forbid that I should sin in ceasing to pray for you. And I prayed for this ministry uh, yesterday when I prayed. I didn't do much praying this morning. I was all groggy when I got up. <laughs> it took a long time to get the cobwebs out of the way. <laughs> so, the word pray, P R A Y, is 313 times in the Bible. Prayer, P R A Y E R, is 114 times for a total of 427 times concerning <laughs> prayer. So, God forbid that we should cease to pray for one another. Now, I know we're forgetful, and the older I get, the more forgetful I get. <laughs> but uh, God forbid that we should cease to pray. I have a, on my computer at home, I have a Facebook page that has all of my, has the family across the top, and then in there it has a picture of the church, picture of the bus, picture of the bus people, a picture of other people that I pray, try to pay for regularly. And uh, so when I see that bus and I see the church, then that includes you all. I may not remember you by name, but that includes you all. And uh, 1 Samuel 15, 23, for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And that's what Samuel said to King Saul when he failed to do precisely what God said to do. God gave him specific instructions what to do with that people and that king. And it says they kept part of the sheep. His excuse was to, to make an offering unto the Lord. And it was, that's not what God said to do. And so as we read the Bible, and we understand what God says to do, then we need to do exactly what God says to do. And because of that rebellion of King Saul, he lost the spirit of God, he lost the kingdom of God, and God sent him a devil instead. And so the rest of his life he was plagued by that devil. And God could do the same to either one of us if we rebel. Now that doesn't seem, that doesn't mean we don't stump our toes or fall over ourselves sometimes uh, or open our mouth and change feet. Uh, but the principle of our life is that we're going to do things God's way. First Kings 12, 28 to 30. The king made two calves, and this thing became a sin. And that verse has to do with the split of the kingdom between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam took over from King Saul, <coughs> and Jeroboam was the leader of the northern ten tribes. Yeah. And he came to Rehoboam and wanted to discuss how we're going to work this out. And Rehoboam says, I'm going to be twice as mean as my dad. And Jeroboam says, okay, we're going to go our own way. And so he told everybody, let's go. And then to keep everybody from coming to Jerusalem to worship, the way God said, he built two calves in Dan and then Beersheba, I think, was the other one, I don't know. But anyhow, um, that thing became sin because it's, it, it it violated the first two commands, God first and no idols. That calf became an idol, two of them, 
And so it just drove the northern tribes away from God, and they ended up eventually going into captivity to the nation of Assyria to the north. So God can carry us away wherever he wants. Psalm 107, verse 7. I mean 109, verse 7. Can't read either. Let us let his prayer become sin. And uh, the his there is your enemies. And David is saying, oh, but the, whatever enemy he was praying about, he said, let his prayer become sin. Well, I would say, let God be the judge of that in your life. You got an enemy that's always bothering you, harassing you, picking on you, whatever, then rather than you pray about his sin, you let God judge his sin and you pray for him to get right with God. Yeah, Proverbs. Proverbs 10, 16. The fruit of the wicked is sin. Uh, you go to a tree or a, a, a berry bush and you expect to get some good fruit off of it. But it says here that the fruit of the wicked is sin. So if you're living amongst and conversing with and associating with a vineyard of sinners, you're going to get some bad fruit. You'll leave a bad taste in your mouth. Verse 19 says, In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. There again, what I said earlier, open mouth, change feet. The more you say, Baedeker, the chances are that you're going to sin. Sometimes you need to just walk away. That's not always easy. We get our dander up, you know, our feathers in our backs end up on the edge, you know, whatever. And uh, we want to chew somebody out real good or, or even cuss them out. Well, then you turn to sin. And God says, so it might just be better to walk away. Proverbs 21, verse 4. The plowing of the wicked is sin. They just can't do anything right. And even what they think they're doing right is sin because they're doing it for themselves. They're not doing it for the Lord. If you're not doing it for the Lord, it doesn't amount to nothing. I'm here this morning because I believe in the Lord, and uh, I believe in you. Proverbs 24, 9, the thought of foolishness is sin. The thought, not the act, not what you say, but the thought of foolishness is sin. If you think about doing something stupid, <laughs> He didn't talk too long. <laughs> uh, Ephesians 5, 4. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which is not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. So instead of all this foolishness that we do all the time, we need to turn our heart into a thankful heart and our mouth to giving thanks and praise to the Lord instead of the foolishness that we so often do. Me, I never do that anymore. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Romans 3.20 For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Uh, one of the courses I've written for the university I work with uh, BI 499 is called the Law of God, and it is 134 pages long. I have here a copy of the Hebrew Torah. It's in both Hebrew and English. It's 1,282 pages. And here's a 1917 English translation of the Old Testament from the Masoretic Hebrew text. And it is 
1,136 pages. You know, how many laws have you violated today? <laughs> and we ain't even got to lunch yet. <laughs> Uh, it's been said that there are 619 laws in the law of God. There was a book called The Law of God that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. And he told Moses, he says, put that in the side of the ark. So evidently when they built the ark of the covenant, they made a place in the side of the ark. And after God wrote that, after Moses wrote down that book of the law, they stuck it there. And the priests were always supposed to read it so they'd remember. And the, the new priests that come along after Aaron and his sons, they had to read it so they'd know what to do. And when they set up a king, the king was supposed to get a copy, so he didn't know what to do. There was one king, some the temple had been polluted, and they were cleaning it up. And uh, they found that book of the law. And they took it to the scribe. And, Right, said, the king needs to see this. So they gave it to somebody and he took it to the king and uh, he was, one time he was sitting in front of the fireplace and so he began to read that scroll, back then they had a scroll, he'd pull up the scroll and read some of it and the king had a knife in his hand and he'd go <laughs> and throw that piece into the fire until he went through all of it. And that was the book of Jeremiah. And God said, write it all over again, and I'm going to give you some more. And now we have the whole book of Jeremiah. You can't get away from God's word. Romans 7, 7. Is the law sin? Question mark. God forbid. Period. Okay? I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law has said, thou shalt not covet. <laughs> mm. What's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine, and I'm going to get it whether you want to give it to me or not. <laughs> uh, Colossians 3, 5. Mortify, kill, bury it, put it in the ground. Therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness is the tenth commandment. Idolatry is the second commandment. So every time you covet something, you violate two commandments. Uh, adultery, when you commit up to one, that's a case against the law. That's right. Romans 14:23. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. It has to do with doubtful things. So if you're thinking about something, if you doubt, don't do it. Because it could be if you went ahead and do it in doubt because of a lack of faith, it becomes sin. And we don't want that in our lives. 1 Corinthians 8:12. But when ye sin so against the brethren, and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. And this goes back to the verse I just read about lack of faith. If you think it's okay for you to do something, but somebody who's watching you doesn't, and you do it, and they see you do it, that wounds their weak conscience. And you've not only sinned against that brother or sister, the Bible says you've sinned against God. God. And you don't want that on your record. James 2 9. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin. Respect to persons is used eight times in the Bible. There's no space on this earth for respected persons or what we call prejudice. You know, like the song was in red and yellow, black and white, they are prejudiced in this side. Jesus loves the big children, in other words. <laughs> so, uh, 
And that's not only against people, but particularly he's talking about respect of persons, but just respect of things. Uh, you might be somewhere that, where there's property that belongs to, to belong to the government, to belong to a church, or belong to anybody. If you're disrespectful to that property, then you're disrespectful to the owner of that property. In other words, the case might be uh, the trash that we have. You know, don't throw it in your neighbor's yard. <laughs> They've got enough to do. <laughs> uh, find a receptacle and dispose of it properly. In heaven, the Bible says we're all going to be like Jesus anyway. You know, and going back all the way back, it says we were created in the image of God. Every person here has a body. Jesus had a body. Every person in here has a soul. Jesus had a soul. Every person in here has a spirit. If you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit. And when he resurrected from the dead, he went back to be with God the Father, and then he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. So, again, there's no room for prejudice. James 4, 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If you have an opportunity to do some good for someone and you don't take the opportunity, it's sin. Now, if you're not able to take that opportunity, that's different. But remember, there's a difference between a reason and an excuse. Uh, in the uh, 70s, I was in the Navy Reserve. And just like Josh was off on his uh, weekend meeting, we met one weekend a month. And this one Saturday morning, a lot of people showed up late. I don't forget how many, but a whole bunch of them had flat tires. <laughs> Yet none of them come in with dirty clothes or dirty hands. <laughs> Captain put a stop to that. <laughs> You're going to be here on time, or just don't show up. And sometimes we need to show up on time to whatever it is that God puts before us to do good, to be good, to do something that's good towards somebody else. Huh. Proverbs 25, 21. If thy enemy be hungry, Give him bread to eat, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt keep coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. You do your part and leave the rewards to God. And uh, so that's what I've done throughout my life, to try to do what God wants me to do, and I've been greatly blessed by it. Now, ultimately blessed, I'll get some ultimates in heaven, I hope. <laughs> I know I'm going, I don't, I don't know what he's got in store for me. Uh, we'll find out. Every one of us is going to stand there at the judgment seat of Christ and uh, get judged for what we did for him. We're not going to be judged for our sin. Jesus judged our sin when he died on the cross. No one goes to hell because of their sin. No. They go to hell because they reject Jesus Christ. Amen. That's all the more important reason for us to be telling about Jesus Christ. 1 John 3, 4. Whosoever committed sin transgendeth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And as I said, here's the Torah. Anybody fall short? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you fall short, brother? Amen. <laughs> so, uh, the Torah uh, is the Pentateuch, or what, the first five books of the Bible Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Don't forget the Quran and that thing. And uh, so, 
I referred to the book of the law earlier, and the phrase, the book of the law, is spoken in the Bible 19 times. Now, we don't have that now. Uh, the ark is in heaven, according to the book of Revelation. Amen. So, since the ark is in heaven, I would assume the book of the law is in the side of the ark in heaven. But we have enough here, we have enough here, and here, that we can't keep up. But we have to do our best. We have to rely on the Lord. We have to stay in the scriptures and learn something. Amen. First John 5, 17. All unrighteousness is sin. If it ain't right, don't do it. Well, how am I going to know what's right? The Holy Spirit that is in you as a Christian in this book will tell you what's right. Now, if you show up in a situation and you don't have this with you, you should have enough of it up here that the Holy Spirit can tell you whether what that thing is right or wrong. Amen. Now, like I said earlier, I can't tell about you. I don't know where you live, your circumstance, but Jesus Christ does. And if you're saved and born again, the Holy Spirit lives within you, and He will tell you right from wrong, along with the Word. Now, the Holy Spirit will never contradict the written Word of God. So, listen to the Word, and listen to the Holy Spirit. There you go. So, there again, if it ain't right, don't do it. So, I'll pause with these thoughts. Who in here can raise their right hand or left hand for that matter and say, I know I'm a Christian? Who can say that? Come on, let me see hands. Don't be afraid, I'm not going to eat you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Now, if you have doubts or don't know that you're saved and born again, would you let me see your hand so I can pray for you? Anybody? Nobody, okay. All right, I'm going to close with a word of prayer and we'll do the usual thing of moving tables. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I close this service, this time of preaching with a word of prayer, asking you to help us all remember these things as we live day by day, wherever it is we live. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.